Hello, and welcome to the Wednesday show of Adamo Baseball, where I'm your host, Adamo. So, this episode I'm doing on Charlie Montoyo. In my three previous Wednesday shows on the managers, I felt like I didn't do enough justice. I don't know I'm going to be able to do enough justice on this one, though I found an article from a Canadian website, uh, sportsnet.ca. It goes very in-depth into his journey, like his whole life's journey to just to getting to Toronto as a manager, which is actually a fascinating story. and in some ways really sad but in other ways kind of like the little train that could and i love it i don't love sorrow i want to make that clear but yeah so i don't know i'm fully going to do this justice but i'm going to give him my best shot he was born october 17th 1965 in Florida, Puerto Rico. He primarily played as a second baseman. He played a grand total of four games with five at-bats with Montreal Expos in 1993. That was all the playing experience he had. He had a single in his first at-bat in the bottom of the eighth of one game. And then later on, he had a double Lifetime, he scored a run, he had three RBIs in five at-bats with two hits, a lifetime batting average of 400, and a slugging, or an on-base percentage of 400 because he never walked and he never struck out, and he, uh, and he had a slugging percentage of 600 because he did manage to score. That is his entire playing career in the majors. However, he mostly made his name well known throughout the minors. But even before he played in the minors, it, it's best to see, or it's best to dig into his history a little bit because whenever he was playing as a 16 year old in Puerto Rico, he was known as El Nino de Toro or de oro. I'm sorry that I'm butchering Spanish, but I, I can't roll my R's. What that translates to is the golden bo child, the golden boy, or the boy of gold. I think is how that actually translates, but it means the golden boy. He was like a stud second baseman playing in Puerto Rico in this town of like six-ish thousand people, seven-ish thousand. The local ballpark there is named after his uncle who died in Vietnam. He spent a very long time in the minors. He was drafted by the Brewers in the sixth round in 1986. He ended up spending most of his career in the minors. Like I said, he only played in four games in the majors for the Expos. He spent a long time in the minors. He was drafted in 86, that would make him 22. He spent five years playing in the minors. And apparently he plateaued there and he just never really was able to get his big break. He was actually a player manager in, I think it was 95, 96? I think it was 96. And one of the guys that he coached in at AA, AA Harrisburg in Pennsylvania, Vladimir Guerrero. Yeah, the future Hall of Famer. He actually was a player manager with Vlad Guerrero Sr. So he was already coaching up them big boys that ended up going pew. And he actually got his legit first start managing 
in the Rays system as a single-A manager, like full-time manager, not a player manager, but as an actual full-time manager when the expansion Tampa Bay Double Rays were becoming a team. One of the things people don't think about with expansion teams is that you're not just creating one team, you're creating an entire farm system. So you've got like five minor league teams that you have to create at the exact same time so that that major league team can properly set it up for the future. And whenever he was a minor league manager, he actually won a lot. Let's see if I can find that exact paragraph in this article because there's a lot of a lot of success actually. There we go. So single A affiliate Hudson Valley. He won a division title in '98. He got a playoff berth for single A Bakersfield no one. He won the Southern League title for Double A Montgomery in 06. Seven division titles, six trips to the International League Finals, two Governors Championships, and the Triple A Championship during his eight seasons with the Durham Bulls. He was also named Manager of the Year twice and given Baseball America, the magazine, awards of Triple A Manager of the Year and Minor League Manager of the Year. And after all of these successes, in 2016, he was named the Tampa Bay Rays third base coach. His name was brought up to be the new manager, but Kevin Cash got the job. So while he was the third base coach and later the bench coach for the Rays, when Kevin Cash was really building that team up, um, Charlie Montoyo actually ended up getting a lot of interviews, like a lot of calls. Um, Cincinnati was the one where he was a finalist, but the jobs just kept going to other people for insert reason here. And whenever he got the call to be a Toronto Blue Jays manager, neither he nor the man or nor the Blue Jays actually thought he would get the job. Like it actually took the GM at or uh, Mark Shapiro, it took him at at Tampa Bay calling him down saying, "Dude." The Blue Jays are serious. They're actually going to give you a shot. Because he'd been working his whole life, and he was 53 at this point, just to try to get to the bigs and not just have you know a couple of games as a player way back in the day. At this point, that's 28 years ago. So, yeah, it literally took Shapiro to tell him, dude, you're you're being given a shot. This is real. And it was actually a bunch of the other candidates at Toronto that were like, Mom, oh, dude, go ahead and give this guy a chance. Like, we were tracking his, his minor league successes and the fact that he's been a bench coach for Kevin Cash. See what he's got to offer. But then, yeah, he ended up being the guy and got the job. It's not all sunshine and rainbows, though. Part of why it it's not. So while he so while he was still a single A manager, it has it kind of jumped from 01 to 06 in terms of having success. Well, that's because during that era that time frame he's the father of two boys while his second son had or was born with uh, degenerative um, he's born with a heart issue 
which requires me to say words that I am not physically capable of saying. So, basically, his son Alex actually ended up having surgeries several times. He wasn't even able to eat, or he didn't eat anything until he was three. He was actually given a feeding tube because he lost, I think, part of his vocal cords, part of his stomach. I don't know if it said he had to have a full heart transplant or not, and as a toddler and as a baby, that's not something you ever want to hear. So, yeah, like, before his second son was born, he would, Charlie would have tantrums as a manager because he felt like he needed to be feisty whenever his second son was born. It was no longer about being feisty or, you know, letting him have it. It was, we need to ensure we have health insurance. We can't lose the insurance. The bills are stacking up. Minor league coaches don't get paid like major league coaches. That, that's a solid fact. So, yeah, he ended up toning it down a lot with his uh, fiery personality. I have not heard of him. Hold on. I can look this up right now. In two full seasons and part of this season as a manager for the Toronto Blue Jays, he's been ejected three times. Total. Which means that, yeah, he has toned that down a lot. However, yeah, so he and his wife, Samantha, have definitely dealt with Dealt with, you know, making absolutely certain that their kids grow up happy and healthy. Like, his older son actually ended up growing up to like field hockey better, Tyson. Whereas his younger son, Alex, is actually following in dad's footsteps and, like, really loves to watch baseball now. So, yeah, both his boys are. They're at least healthy. LDR. Um, Tyson never had an issue, but um, Alex Alex has definitely gotten better over the years. Whenever I, or when I read the article, it said he was 11. It did not specify when the article was written, but it was a year after Hurricane Maria, because that was explicitly mentioned. So, yeah, like, he's already... Like, his whole dream growing up being Nino de Oro, he was, he just wanted to be in the bigs. Well, that little kid from, or that guy from Florida, Puerto Rico, who played at Louisiana Tech on a full ride scholarship, no less. Gotta make it to the bigs. And now to carry on with his managerial stats a little bit. Rookie year as a manager, not great, but not much was expected of the Blue Jays in 2019. So finishing 67 and 95, look, you're not going to win a lot as a manager. Or you're not going to win a lot as a rookie manager most of the time. There are exceptions. Alex Cora being the prime example, Dave Roberts. But most managers don't do that. Finished second in the American League East. And he's ejected twice in 60 in 162 games, which is about what you would expect. Last year, in the strike shortened season, he led the Jays to the playoffs. Part, yes, they were 32 and 28, and they made the playoffs because it was an expanded field. That doesn't change the fact that they went to the playoffs, and he did take them there. He was only ejected once. It was a third place finish, and they got swept by the Tampa Bay Rays, who were hands down the best team in the American League last year. 
Rosarina hadn't made his name very well known yet, but yeah. They got creamed by the Rays. Anyone not named the Dodgers got creamed by the Rays. You could even say that the Astros got creamed by the Rays, even though there was a Game 7. There shouldn't have been a Game 7. So, I feel like I did jump over a few things that my mind was a little all over the place, but I had just read that article and I felt like I needed to say at least some of that. I need to at least get some of that out there. And look, I'm not the best storyteller, but I'd like to think I told at least some of that story. And this was definitely, this is definitely so far the most interesting one I've read. Alex Cora is from Puerto Rico too. And it said Charlie Montoya is the third Puerto Rican born manager in baseball. I don't know who the other one is. So, yeah, he's he's got the Jays going in the right direction. They got off to a bit of a slow start, but I still think that them making the playoffs is possible. The Red Sox are off to a way better start than I thought they would be, but it's still possible for the Jays to make it to the playoffs. And those are my thoughts on Charlie Montoyo. And I know this episode is a bit longer than I necessarily expected it to be. And frankly, I'm glad I did this one because I didn't know any of that. I found out earlier today that he even played in the league, even if it was just for a couple of weeks. Because, yeah, he played for about 22 days. If there's something else you want to say about Charlie Montoyo, please leave your comments down below. Or if you're listening to my podcast, you can come over to my YouTube channel, leave the comments down below. Or you can let me know on Twitter, Adamo Baseball Podcast, or at Adamo Baseball One. It was that simple. So, quick little preview on Friday. I'm going to do a little differently than I have uh, the last few weeks. I got something special in mind. I've already gone through my first draft. And after doing my first draft, I know that that's not the end of it. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's definitely going to be a little different. And look out for it. Um, It's going to air my usual time, Friday, 5 p.m. I'm probably even going to be working on it today, possibly tomorrow. Uh, The video itself, I don't know how well it's going to get out, but the content's definitely going to be... A little more fun. I don't know how much fun, more fun my video will be, but listening to it, I think, will be. So, with that being said, thank you for listening. Cheers until next time. <laughs>